All right, can everyone see and hear me okay? Perfect. I'm 22 and I've never been in a relationship. I don't know, I guess I just haven't met the right one yet. Or a one. Or two. But I still try to put myself out there. Even during the pandy. I'm on hinge like all the time. You know what? Maybe you guys can help me. Okay, what do we think of Michael? Give me thumbs up, thumbs down. What are we thinking? Thumbs up? Okay, perfect. Let's start with a breezy opener. Hmm. I hope this isn't too forward, but I really think we could have a fulfilling future together. I don't know. There's just something about you that makes me feel like you're the one, but I'm honestly kind of against the idea of marriage as an institution. But I still want to spend the rest of my life with you. LOL, what do you think? That was good, right? No, that was horrible. Literally, what was I thinking? Oh my God, he responded. And it isn't his penis. Instead, he sent me an article from The Guardian on June 29th, 2018 that says, men are happier, have better physical and mental health, and are better off financially within marriage than women. You know, their partners. And then he said, so what if we just had a lifelong partnership where I didn't try to own you? Um, Lady Boner, showing. Thanks for the speech topic, babe. And he's right. According to the cut on March 31st, 2019, marriage works well for men, but at the expense of women. Also, I told him he's right, which for most men is considered sexting. Marriage needs to die, for women's sake. So let's get into it. Today we'll discuss the history of marriage, why it's still a problem, and what we can do to fix it. Listen, if you're married and happy, work, bitch. Long-term committed relationships are not inherently problematic. However, marriage as an institution has been and continues to be used to subjugate, oppress, and in some instances, terrorize women. Don't believe me? Well, I got seven more minutes to convince you. Oh. Oh, and there's his penis, <laughs> I think. Yes, yes, there it is. That's it. For starters, marriage was not created to be a union of love. According to Psych Central on June 29th, 2018, people originally got married in exchange for production, protection, and property. You know, property like land, animals, the 16 year old getting married. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's 12. Most of the time there was a bride price paid from the groom's family to the bride's family. What's my bride price? Oh honey, if you even have to ask. In English common law, the doctrine of coverture from 1776 decreed that a woman was literally considered her husband's chattel. Translation, woman was property of man. Yay! Maybe now he'll treat me as well as he treats his car. <laughs> not much has changed. Yes, women are now allowed to speak, but we get corrected and not listened to. And when we are listened to, our ideas get stolen by men and presented as if they came up with it. I look forward to seeing this speech in finals next year. By a man. Also, according to CBS News on June 30th, 2020, child, marriage is still a thing. Wait, oh my God, no, I, I got the emphasis wrong. Um, child, marriage is still a thing. Yeah, in America. Seriously, between 2000 and 2015, more than 200,000 minors were married. I, as an adult, can't commit to a hairstyle. As you can see, I have both business in the front as well as party in the back. And somehow Clayson from Bristol Middle School can be committed to a lifelong marriage? That we allow child marriage to continue shows how insane our views on marriage really are. Why is marriage still a problem today? Individual pressure and divorce. According to psychologist Bella DiPaolo, who has spent her entire career studying single people, and still, 
doesn't understand how anyone married Ted Cruz, on July 2nd, 2019, putting such a strong emphasis on marriage means people often overlook other meaningful relationships. Remember your friend who got married and you never talked to her again? Yeah, this is her now. Feel old yet? Oh, she got a promotion, good for her. Boston College found in a 2015 study that married folks are far less likely to visit with outside family and friends. Now, imagine sacrificing all your friends, family, and social ties for Ted Cruz. Next, divorce. Psychology Today on February 3rd, 2019 explains the countries with the highest number of women in the workforce consistently have the highest rates of divorce. Financially independent women are more likely to leave their husbands because, and this is the important part, they can afford it. Which means many marriages are falsely propped up by a woman who literally can't afford to leave. And before you say, well, divorce favors the woman, or men shouldn't get married because financially men always get screwed. Remember this, that's what you sound like. and. Here's a boner killer. You're wrong. Women lose in divorce. The Atlantic on April 28, 2019 explains poverty rates for separated women, 27%, three times higher than separated men. Yes, we all have that one friend who lost a bunch of money in a divorce, but that's called an outlier. It's like matching with a straight guy who doesn't send or request a genitals JPEG. Sure, it happens, but not enough to where we can say it's the norm. Oh, he's calling. In 2021, you know what that means, he's a serial killer. There are two simple solutions on both a personal and societal level. On a personal level, don't get married even if you're in love. Well, Ashley, you've never been in love. What do you know? Well, first of all, ouch. And second, the Atlantic on July 2nd, 2019 explains that women who remain unmarried are more likely to participate politically and community organize. In other words, staying single is how you smash the motherfucking patriarchy. I mean, that's why I've been single for so long. <laughs> On a societal level, we have two expectation changes. Change the end goal of relationships and stop associating marriage with kids. In order to help put the final nail in the marriage coffin, we have to stop seeing marriage as the end goal of relationships. This means, Stop asking couples when they're going to get married. Next, marriage and kids have to stop being connected. Kids needing to grow up in a married household is a bullshit lie, literally meant to scare women into staying with shitty husbands. The Brookings Institute on April 15th, 2019 explains that stability is what matters most when raising children. If that's the case, then stability, not marriage, should be the main goal of families. Also, stop having kids. Different speech, I know, but like, come on! The world is dying. Adopt, don't pop. Now, I know what you're thinking. But Ashley, there must be some instances when getting married is okay. And you're right, there are two. Number one, cheating our broken system for things like citizenship and healthcare. Number two, you're gay. Straight people have had marriage for so long and kept it from the gays for no damn reason. So now, they get to be on the outside looking in. And if you're straight, you can like, I guess, get married. Just not to someone of the opposite sex. Sorry, breeders. I know it's hard to let go of the fairy tale delusion we've all been conditioned to believe, but the culture surrounding marriage is powerful. He replied after his dick pic. Feminist opener, penis portrait, then feminist recovery. Here's the sad thing, men, that's actually a pretty good ratio. He'll never be my husband, but hey, maybe a sexting buddy is all I'll ever need. <laughs>
All right, give us just a second. 